Nothing's permanent, everything is fleeting, but at least in R we have ways to store information in a persistent state for some period of time. We do that using variable assignment, which is the theme of this episode. Let's hit it. So variable assignment in R looks different than in other languages, just syntactically, the way that we're going to employ it here, but uh, not much complicated to it, pretty simple stuff. Let's say we want the variable A to hold the value 5. We can run that, and then we can give it input A into the console, and look, it's going to return 5, pretty simple. And if you wanted to evaluate, let's say, A plus 2, go ahead and run that, return 7, treats it just like a number. So. So if you have background in another programming language, you're probably used to seeing variable assignment look something more like this, uh, where you use the equals sign to assign values to a variable. And that actually works just the same in R. You can use it. Uh, we're going to advocate that you don't do that just for clarity and consistency. Most style guides you're going to see for R are going to encourage you to use that less than sign and that dash. Now to me that looks like a little arrow. It's kind of a visually satisfying syntax. It shows 5 is going into A. So we'll get rid of the syntax we're going to avoid using here, and we'll look at a couple other things with variables just real quick. Uh, let's say we have b, and we set the value of b to 3, and I'd like to evaluate a plus b. Go ahead and look at that. It comes out as 9. Now we'd set a to 6 earlier, so you can see in the console it's coming out as 9 here, so it's important to keep track of where you're at. This is a relatively simple context. We can see everything that we've put in here in the console, and so it's easy to visually register, oh, okay, we put A to 6. But when you're doing more complicated and larger scale programs, taking meticulous care to notice when you're changing the values of things is of vital importance. Otherwise, you can sneak up on yourself and cause yourself a good number of problems. Now, you can make statements for R to evaluate that use only variables. In this case, let's set C equal to the value of B times A. And then let's go ahead and take a look at C. All right, we got 3 times 8 equals 18, and that's the only output it gives us, just that 18 there. Now, I want to show you something. Let's say we want to change the value of B. Let's say B is now 99. We'll run that, put it in, and let's just make sure what B is. Let's take a look at B. Okay, it's 99. Well, let's look at C. Does C change if we change B? And the answer to that is no. We set C at B times A. It's not going to maintain that relationship with B and A. It just holds that constant numerical value. You are by no means limited to using just single characters as the names for your variables. You can use just about any string of characters that starts with a letter, can't start with a number, to hold a value for you. So we could have Mike get the value 5. We could have F2RT6 get the value of 0. We could have uh, 4 get the value of 3. And you'll notice pretty quickly here that there are good ways to do this. And there are bad ways to do this. Let's take a look at what we have for 4 here. That's going to evaluate in the console, of course, as 3. And that's pretty counterintuitive, not terribly helpful, a little bit confusing. So when you're creating variables in your programs, be mindful of what you're up to. It helps to give them descriptive names. All right, so an example of a descriptive variable name might be, let's say, count states. And so there are 50 states in these United States. We'll assign it the value of 50. And then we'll go ahead and take a look at it. You'll notice that underscore is a totally fine character to use in your variable names here. Look, we have 50 states. Uh, now you can modify this variable using itself in the following way. Let's say that California sinks into the ocean. We can assign to count states count states minus 1. And we go ahead and run that. And let's take a look at count states. 49, we're down one. Uh, let's say that Puerto Rico attains statehood, and furthermore, uh, we annex Canada. So we're going to get two more states this way, and let's evaluate those two lines and take a look at where we're at. Count states is equal to 51. So this example of count states here is just an example of a variable name that gives you an idea of what the variable value is about. That's uh, going to change from one context to another in the programs that you're going to write. Uh, but something that's a good habit to keep yourself in so that when you come back to your own work, you can tell what you were up to. Or if you share it or pass it off to other people, they can tell what you're up to. It's, in general, an excellent habit to maintain.